Hi, I'm Jake. This is another episode of Good Idea, Bad Execution. <sighs> Give me a second. <sighs> it's a little chilly out. I mean, not as bad as it has been. Believe me. We have had 30-some below the last... I don't think we've hit zero... Um, for a while yeah it's been a it's been a bit pardon me let me get this set right here all right now we go look at that hey how you doing <laughs> <coughs> don't worry about that grumbling in the back it's not the end of the world i promise that is just the generator running just letting her warm up a little bit Along with the rest of the shop here. Because <sighs> we're going to get the uh, snowblower running. Yes, I'm smoking on camera again. I don't care. It's my fucking channel. I'll do what I want. Ain't like I'm getting paid for this shit. <laughs> Anyways. We gotta get the snowblower running, cause uh, I believe it was. Oh goodness! Just the other day we had uh, a pretty good snowstorm, and um, the driveway got pretty blown in. Well, a buddy of mine was nice enough to come and plow us out, so I didn't have to fire up the snowblower and spend three hours out there trying to clear it. So, kudos to him. Jesse, you're an awesome, awesome, awesome human being. I love you. However, that, said, that being said, he didn't clear a path to the shed. Yeah, you know what? That's okay. So I'm just letting the generator warm up a little bit so that I can get the snowblower fired up so that I can get a path going to the shed from the driveway. I mean, I don't... I, don't know, I got... Maybe 50 feet, 60 feet to go. <coughs> it's not all that terrible. Uh, but it's where the, uh, where he plowed that mound now that he made. That's going to be the hard part to get through. Um, I think I'm going to have to break that down with the shovel a little bit. And just throw it in the snowblower. Uh, and let it do its thing. Let it eat. Let it eat this white pig. Don't mind me. It's been a long freaking week. It is, uh, fuck day is it? It's Monday the 10th, I think. I think. I know it's a Monday. I'll give you that much. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're going to try something here. Dude, look at that. That's awesome. It's just freaking awesome. We have light. I have light. And I said, let there be light. And there was light because I paid for all this shit and did all the work myself. Not just because I said, let there be light. It's because I paid for all this shit and did all the work myself. <sighs> Oh, goodness. It's cold, man. No, actually, it's only about five below right now. Maybe eight below. Tomorrow is supposed to be beautiful. Tomorrow is supposed to be almost 30 degrees. I can't believe it. I haven't seen that in ages. She has an appointment tomorrow. Boy's going to be in school tomorrow. I'm going to have the house to myself tomorrow for a while. At least a couple hours. I mean, at least like three hours at least, I'm hoping. Um, so, yeah. I have a plan for tomorrow. Hopefully, I can get it done. The, uh, the car, car is shot. I don't know if I mentioned that before. I think I have maybe in a previous video. 
The car is shot. Um, transmission seal went out on it. And my guy came and looked at it and he said, you know, it's a 15 year old car already. How much do you want to put into a 15 year old car with 246,000 miles on it? Because to fix that transmission seal, you either have to pull the engine or drop the tranny. It's been a good car. It really has. I only paid 1500 bucks for it off a buddy of mine like five years ago. I got my 1500 bucks out of it like the first summer I had it, okay? The daughter and I, we took it down to Illinois. Um, went and visited some family. Went to Chicago, went and saw Metallica at Soldier Field. Ah! Um, and, and, and drove home and didn't have an issue. In fact... Um, I believe that was the first, maybe second time that my daughter had, uh, driven on, you know, actual interstates. I mean, she's, you know, driven on like four lane roads, but, um, you know, actual interstate speeds and she did awesome. She really did. And I'm really proud of her. You know, one of the many, many things I'm proud of her for, um, but it was a good car. It really was. It was fun. It was a 3.8 liter, so, I mean, it had plenty of power for the weight that it was because it's not all that heavy. Uh, I put a new, I, I put an aftermarket stereo in it because the stereo went to hell on me. I put new speakers in the back because one of the speakers, one of the 6x9s in the back had gone to hell on me. So, all of that's coming out. Um, that being said, want to buy some six by nines, sell them to you real cheap. Um, I'm debating on what I'm going to do with the stereo and the, and the six by nines. The stereo I think is going to go in the truck. Um, I've got to get an adapter so that I can make the steering wheel controls continue to work um, but uh, you know I I also have these that were you can't you can't see them but this black box right here yeah that black box is housing two 12 inch subwoofers fresh out of the box never been hit Took them out of the box, mounted them into that box, wired them up. That's it. Yeah, they haven't been hit yet. For those of you that don't know what I mean, no, I don't hit the subwoofers. What I mean is there has not been a, been a base hit on those subs yet. Okay? They have not been fired. They have not been used. They are still brand spanking new. <clears throat> Somebody want to buy some subwoofers in a box? Um, I have an amp for them. A couple amps, actually. I think I have three amps. Um, the original plan was... Um, I put four 6x9s in the back dash of that car. Right now, they are just running in series off of the uh, the head unit, okay? The plan was to, and I've got all the wiring ran, which that's got to come out too. But um, the plan was to mount dual amplifiers for the 6x9s to give them a little extra boost. And then have a single amplifier for the two subwoofers and um you know create an amp rack you know and and that was part of the reason why i got this clear plexi over here and part of the reason why i picked up the black plexi that i did um but you know that shit happens 
and there's not much we can do about it, so we just kind of have to roll with the punches. And that's today's life lesson, boys and girls. Roll with the damn punches. Sure, let shit get you down once in a while. But uh, don't let it keep you down. Okay? They say when a door closes, a window opens, or when a window opens, a door closes... You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody's heard that line. It's all well and good. It's cool. Um, if anything, I will just try and recoup some of my money. Um, or I will uh, see about putting them in the truck. Make my truck bounce. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen the Silverado with, with subwoofers in it. It's a specialized box. It sits underneath the back seat. Or I could just rip the back seats out completely and do a custom box to, uh, to accommodate for the transmission tunnel or the drive shaft tunnel. Whatever. I actually had to do something like that with my old S10. Um, what I did was... I actually had four, four 12 inch subwoofers in, a, in the back of an S10. Before you ju come to judgment on me, hear me out, okay? There was a sound off competition coming up. I was able to get parts and pieces and whatnot fairly cheap. Uh, some I got for uh, Father's Day, birthday, Christmas, shit like that. And it had been accumulating for a while and um this sound off competition came up and i'm like you know what now's the time yeah i'm gonna do this i had no intention on placing i just wanted to see what i was capable of doing okay and uh so what i did was i had taken two single subwoofer boxes and then bolted them to a dual subwoofer box Slapped the whole thing in behind the seats, mounted uh, two 1,000 watts uh, amplifiers on the back of the dual box, and one ran these two subs, one ran these two subs, okay? <coughs> so I could keep my left and right channels. Uh, I had uh, two two farad capacitors on the sides of the dual box and then I had um, the dash speakers in the truck had gone to shit a long time ago and then actually the door speakers went out uh, not long after that so I just wired everything to 6 by 9s in you know sp in specific 6 by 9 boxes and um, yeah, I just I kind of strategically placed them in with everything else. And honestly, I couldn't see out my back window. It was kind of cool. Every time that the, uh, uh, the capacitors clipped, it would flash like a red light. And I kept thinking I was getting pulled over. <laughs> uh <laughs> But anyways, I did make it to my sound off competition, and uh, when I got there, the guy, this judge, whatever, he kind of looked in, and, okay, and he wrote a, a an L3, I believe it was, and I said, what's the 3 for? He's like, well, you're a level 3. I said, what does level 3 mean? He says, a level 3 means you can't see out the back window. He said, a level 1 is everything is, you know, pretty much hidden, and you've got an unobstructed view. Level two is a partially obstructed view. A level three is a completely obstructed view. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. So when it came time, I pulled up in my 96 S10. Um, and I ended up running... Um, I've got a picture of it somewhere. Because they wrote it on my dash, or on my uh, windshield afterwards. It was uh, 133 decibels at 32 hertz, something like that. I looked it up. Um, the equivalent 
would be standing next to a jackhammer without ear protection. So, and obviously I didn't place. Um, it wasn't the cleanest build ever. Like I said, everything was kind of cobbled together. So, and, and I didn't care. I wanted to see what I was capable of doing. Um, I enjoyed the, the sound that it produced. A lot of other people enjoyed the sound that it produced, including my daughter. And Dad, this is a great back massager. <laughs> <clears throat> that summer I took everything out and started parting it out and you know made a little bit of uh, money off of it and I haven't had the bug for a while and then I got the Pontiac and I'm like yeah you know I could have some fun with this um I am looking for another another car um just another daily driver, just something to drive back and forth to work, because the, uh, the V8 in the truck, she she likes to drink the gas haul, you know what I mean? So, and when filling my tank is 60, 60, 70 bucks a pop, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it takes a toll on the pocketbook, you know what I mean? So, that being said, um, you know, I'd kind of like to, I'd kind of like an older, like an, o, I think it's 02 through 05, maybe, or 01 through 05, uh, Monte Carlo, with uh, the same 3.8 liter in it, would be nice. Um, you know, a buddy of mine has got one similar, right around that year, um, Big trunk, lots of room for speakers. <laughs> but, you know, I'm 43, I'm not dead yet. That's the point I, I guess I'm trying to make. Um, it's still fun for me to do stuff like that. It really is. Um, I, I kind of like the wiring, the that monotony um you know and that first time you turn the key on and the radio comes on and the amps come on you do that first test hit and everything works you know you did it right nothing's blowing you're not frying any fuses you're not clipping any amps, you know, you've got your gains right, you know, you've got your, you know, you've got everything set the way it's supposed to be. It's a good feeling. And those of you that do car audio, you know what I'm talking about, okay? It just, it kind of makes me giddy. Like, yeah, it works. It works, all right. Um, and then you just sit in your car and you just, you play with your EQ a little bit, and you dial this, and you dial that in a little bit, and, and you make it sound just as beautiful as you can. And then you sit in your car for another two hours listening to, you know, something with a, some stuff with a lot of bass to it. Just, and you come out, and your eyeballs are still rattling, and your ears are ringing, and oh, it's a great feeling. Yes, it is. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to try and get that stuff out of the car tomorrow because it's supposed to be nice. If I don't get it till this spring, I don't get it till this spring. The car is sold. I don't have money yet, but I got a guy willing to give me 100 bucks for the car just the way she sits. She's still got decent tires on it. She's still got a strong motor in it. So, um, if he wants to take the time and, and uh, do the tranny... I think he's got a parts car already that he, uh, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it's a buddy of mine from work. He's offered me a little cash for it. So sure. What the hell come get it out of the yard. Cause right now it's nothing but a lawn ornament covering snow. So anyways, on that note, I'm going to get to, uh, I'm going to try and get this thing fired up and, uh, see if we can't get some snow out of the, out of the yard a little bit, or at least make a decent trail. So I really, really, really don't want to shovel. So, uh, 
that being said, we love you. Take care of each other. Stay warm, everybody. It's January. We still got a lot of winter left to go. Not really, like eight, six, seven, seven, eight ish weeks of winter. Yeah. But we still have some winter left to go. So stay warm. Take care of each other. Okay? Remember, like I said before, check on your neighbors. See if they're all right. We love you. Catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.